The movie begins in Warsaw, Poland, in 1939, in a cinema where Rudy places a smoke bomb beneath a cinema seat to cause a commotion and distract the Nazis around the area. As the public rushes outside the cinema in panic, the Serseregi, a scouting organization of young individuals against the Nazis, scatters propaganda paraphernalia as a message to the public that people are willing to fight the Nazis. The group takes down the Nazis armed with knives and batons and collects their weapon for Serseregi's weapon stash. Meanwhile, a portion of the organization vandalizes and steals the Nazi flags at the town square and replaces them with their own as a sign of fighting the oppressors. Later, after encountering the Nazis, Zoshka and Rudy return to their hideout and report to the scoutmaster Ors. They hand the collected weapons and flags to Ors. At the same time, Zoshka complains about bringing no guns for self-defense to fight the Nazis. He claims that it is dangerous for the other members that are not well trained for combat. Ors thinks they are not yet prepared to use a gun as they are still young. After talking with Ors, Zoshka and Rudy walks away and converse about a former member of the organization that passed away as he is defenseless after taking down a Nazi poster. Meanwhile, two members of the Serseregi make a deal with a soldier to sell them a gun, but they do not have enough funds to buy the gun. Both parties then leave as they will not benefit from staying and arguing with each other. At Zoshka's home, they're eating potatoes for lunch. He asks his father, Yosef, for extra funds to support the organization and provide more firepower to fend off the enemies. His sister Hanya disagrees as Zoshka is about to sell their pearl necklace for her marriage. His father also disagrees and tells Zoshka that their donations from years ago are well enough. Subsequently, after Yosef declines the weapon's funding, Rudy executes a plan to collect a Nazi soldier's weapon and uniform near the pub. He rides his three-wheeled bike and offers a lift to a nearby drunk Nazi soldier. He increases the speed and clicks the brake to make the drunk soldier drop at the pond and collects his weapon and uniform. Minutes after that event, Rudy returns to Yosef's house and shows the weapons and uniform to his comrades proudly. Zoshka congratulates him for taking those from the Nazi soldier, but as they examine the items, Yosef enters the room and tells Zoshka to throw away the gun as it only brings danger to their household. Meanwhile, Rudy goes to their warehouse to collect the propaganda paraphernalia and notices a kid hiding at the warehouse. The kid negotiates with him by selling numerous pigeon meat for a low price in return for releasing him. Rudy buys from the kid, and the kid shows how he catches the pigeons, breaks the pigeons' necks, and compares it with what the Nazis are doing to their countrymen. And afterward, they both leave the warehouse. Later that evening, Rudy returns to their home and cooks the pigeons for his father Bittner's birthday. Rudy surprises him with a radio as a gift. But his father worries about him and being part of Ser Serigi's propaganda movement. The following morning, Zoshka and Rudy strolls around the town but notices that the Nazis have gathered multiple civilians at the plaza where one of them is the kid who Rudy bought the pigeons. After picking all civilians, the commander orders the soldiers to shoot them one by one. The commander notices them and orders the soldiers to catch Zoshka and Rudy. But they are too fast and know the streets well to avoid the soldiers' grasp. After escaping the enemies, Rudy discloses that innocent people are being killed by the soldiers, and they must avenge those powerless. Later that afternoon, Zoshka goes to the toy store and storage for their weapons and propaganda paraphernalia, where Hala, his girlfriend, works. He gathers his comrades and inspects the collected weapons for the Home Army Director's decision to wage war against the Nazis. That evening, the Home Army's Director arrives and checks the weapon stash for the fight against the Nazis, and orders them to wait for their final decision on when to prepare the weapons and train for the upcoming battle against the Nazis. The following morning, Ors meets up with the group for a meeting to assess the member count to see if they are prepared for a sudden encounter with the Nazis. But he is gravely disappointed at how little their member count is. Zoshka disagrees and tells him they are well prepared despite having such a low count. Regardless of Zoshka's claim, Ors tells them that it is the Home Army's director's order to make them a standby platoon in case of an emergency only or a small-scale mission. Meanwhile, after the talk with Ors, Zoshka and his comrades go to a firing range to enhance their aim and trust in each other by making some of their members fix the target after shooting it. But one of the members accidentally pulls the trigger just as Pavel fixes the target practice, which almost hits him while returning. Thankfully it does not hit him, but it makes Zoshka realize that some of his men are not yet capable of holding a gun. Tomorrow morning, the Serseregi, led by Zoshka, prepares for loot items that can be sold for a large amount of money. The squad is unaware of what danger they are facing as one of their members is captured alongside other Polish people. After preparing, Sir Sergi arrives at the location where they loot the expensive belongings of some rich Polish people to fund their weapons and squad for more protection against the Nazis. But as they are about to leave, three Nazi soldiers arrive, and they panic. Rudy immediately shoots one of the soldiers before they can shoot first at the squad. 
But unfortunately, a soldier shoots Pavel in his guts, and he dies right away. Zoshka orders his troops to continue shooting the enemies for their escape. After defeating them, they immediately retreat, leaving no time to mourn Pavel's death. Back at their warehouse, the home army's director is disappointed at how poorly they performed the looting, as one of their comrades died in the process. But he added that they could get better. He informed them that he would provide proper training to them next weeks, such as bomb throwing, aiming, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and mental preparedness. Next week arrives, and the Cerceregi are training for future encounters with the Nazis. The squad throws metal containers that act as their bombs toward an empty house while some learn how to detonate bombs that are wired to a remote and where to place the bombs. After the other training, an instructor teaches them how to properly aim and handle guns for a better firing rate. Once they finish the training, just about the Cerceregi takes the oath, three Nazi soldiers appear at their location. Their instructor orders them to capture the soldiers and tie them up to listen to their oath taking. The following day, Rudy wakes up as Nazi soldiers are inside their household and abduct him and his father for being part of the Cerceregi. Later, they arrive at a nearby Nazi establishment where they interrogate Rudy to know the whereabouts of the Cerceregi's plans and who is the organization's leader. The Nazi official orders to torture him to gather more intel, but Rudy's patriotism is stronger than the whips and baton hits from the enemies. Rudy pulls through, but he is gravely injured as every day, his bruises and wounds increase as he experiences multiple ways of torture just for the enemy to get intel from him. Meanwhile, Rudy's mother and sister return after restocking their food rations in the city. Their neighbor warns them to head back and never return to their home as the Nazis take Rudy and Bittner. They rush towards the house of Zoshka to inform them that Rudy is taken by the enemies and is in grave danger. Zoshka calls all Cerceregi local members and orders them to prepare for the attack at the Nazi establishment, where they suspect Rudy is being held captive. They conceal their guns with clothes and put the pistols in their pockets for easier access. Zoshka creates a plan where a member of the organization will act as a Nazi treat supplier to spy inside the establishment and locate the room where they might be keeping Rudy. Meanwhile, they reside at a local fashion shop owned by Mr. Parkhauer to conceal their whereabouts after two of their members are abducted by the Nazis. They place their weapons inside a small room and plan for the upcoming attack to recover the kidnapped members. After finishing moving their equipment at the fashion shop, Zoshka meets with Ors to ask permission to attack the Nazi establishment and recover Rudy. But Ors tells him to stop the plan as the director will decline their plan as many civilians will be put in danger just for rescuing a few members of Cerceregi. Back at the Nazi establishment, the officials still torture Rudy for intel and to spill out that he is one of the higher ranks of Cerceregi. Still, they bring out their trump card as they reveal that one of the captive members of their organization, named Henyek, spilled information about their organization alongside Rudy's location. But Rudy insists that he is not part of the Cerceregi and gives the enemies false information that will just make it harder for him as the torture will continue and get worse. Later that evening, at the plaza, Zoshka surveys where the enemies can transport Rudy alongside some captured Polish hostages to Germany. He returns to their hideout, informing every member of his plan and giving them tasks, such as watching the perimeter, throwing Molotov to the transport to stop their movements, and shooting the drivers and guards. At the same time, some will recover Rudy and place them in the getaway car. Meanwhile, the preliminary survey at the Nazi establishment starts as one of their members enters as one of the treat suppliers for the Nazis. He begins by surveying how many guards are inside and outside while locating the room where Rudy is being held captive and tortured by the enemies. He successfully fools the enemies and discovers where they keep Rudy, who will be transferred using a military truck. He then rushes to a telephone booth nearby. He reports to Zoshka to continue planning for Rudy's attack and rescue operation. He alerts his team to be in position near the suspected pathway of the location of the military truck. But Ors returns after failing to find the director. He calls off the operation by telling his men that Rudy is not in the military truck. Later that evening, Zoshka feels betrayed as the director does not care for Rudy and is lying to them. And suddenly, Monia, Rudy's girlfriend, barges into Zoshka's home and furiously asks him why Rudy is not yet here with them. She adds that before leaving, if Rudy and Zoshka's situation is switched, he would not hesitate to save Zoshka from the Nazis. The following morning at the Nazi medical facility, they transfer Rudy alongside his father. While at Zoshka's home, the telephone rings, and one of his comrades informs him that Rudy is about to be transferred from a medical facility to the Nazi establishment. Zoshka rushes to follow the vehicle but immediately stops following it as it grows dangerous for him to continue pursuing it near the enemy's site. After some time, the member inside the Nazi establishment alerts the Cerceregi to be prepared for another possible transfer of the Polish hostages to Germany. Zoshka orders his comrades to be in a position to attack the military truck and rescue Rudy alongside some other Polish hostages. 
Meanwhile, Orse and Director meet up nearby and approve of the mission. At last, the military truck finally arrives at their location, where they throw several Molotov at the driver's side, causing it to stop and make more time to eliminate the Nazi soldiers. Zoshka and his squad continuously barrage the enemies with bullets, they have successfully defeated the enemies, making the rescue mission successful. The members of Sarsarigi help the Polish people escape while the others carry Rudy towards the escape vehicle, where after the car leaves, Nazi soldiers arrive to shoot at the remaining Sarsarigi in the area, but a mysterious bomb explodes at the enemies, making it safe for the organization to retreat safely. After the incident, Zoshka, alongside some other members, carries Rudy toward their hideout, where they call a doctor to look at Rudy's case. But after some time, the doctor tells them that Rudy is in a critical state and he will try his best to make him recover faster. Everyone is glad that Rudy is back, but little do they know that he is about to be gone at any moment due to his fatal injuries. The movie ends after a series of checkups and catching up with Rudy, his body fails him, and unfortunately dies. His friends, family, and partner are in agony as the rescue mission feels like a failure. Monia then talks to Zoshka and asks him to avenge Rudy and kill the enemies that abducted and tortured him. After some preparations, Zoshka and his comrades kill the Nazi officials and soldiers responsible for Rudy's death. The avenging and killing spree is booming, but on their last mission, a young Nazi soldier shoots Zoshka as he hesitates to shoot him first for the kill until he fully blacks out. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.